Having introduced the terminology of second partial derivatives, second order partial derivatives, we now want to investigate what these might mean to us, and especially trying to associate this with what we know about curvature and second derivatives for single variable functions. So let's start off with a fairly simple example. z is equal to x squared minus y squared. What we're going to do is identify the value of the second partial derivatives at the point negative 2, 1. So to do that, we find the first order derivatives first. We need those before we can calculate the second order derivatives. Uh, with respect to x, that's 2x. With respect to y, it's negative 2y. And then if we go to the second order, the second order derivative with respect to x, or with respect to x twice is what we're saying here, that's the derivative with respect to x of the x derivative. So we get two derivatives and that gives us the value two. The second order derivative with respect to y is another y derivative of the two y, or the z with respect to y derivative. And that's just negative two. And last but not least, we could do this in this last expression in two different ways. Uh, sorry, I call these z's. I apologize. I should stick with consistent notation if I can. Z, z, z. The mixer, mixture of x and y, we could take either way. I'm going to do it x with respect to the y derivative. And that's going to give us 0. So this was uh, di z, di y. So we took the y derivative first, then the x, and we get a value of 0 for that. At the point that we're interested in here, at the point negative 2, 1, the partial derivatives are 2x, that's negative 4, minus 2y is negative 2, and this is always 2, this is always negative 2, that's always 0. Okay. So that's the calculational side of partial derivatives, first order and second order partial derivatives. Now what does this mean in terms of the surface that is defined by this function, z equals x squared minus y squared? Well, here's a picture. And we noted before that di z di x we found was negative 4, and di z di y was negative 2. What does that tell us? Well, at the point 2, Sorry, 2, 1, negative 2, 1. So we're back a bit here and then over. So we're at, on the plane x and y, we're at the point negative 2, 1. What we just said was that if we take a step in the x direction, we have a steepness or a slope. Let's do this in a more vibrant color here. A step in x, or each step in x, is downhill with slope 4, or negative 4 to be precise here. So it's fairly steep downhill. If we were to go in the other direction, in the y direction, then we would have a downhill slope. But you notice it's less steep. The slope there is negative 2, half the slope of the slope in the x direction. So we have a fairly nice interpretation, and fairly clear interpretation, I hope, of the meaning of these partial derivatives. When we take a step in x, what slope do we see? When we take a step, again, in positive y, this positive x and positive y, what slope do we see? What about the second derivatives? Uh, there's only two of them, the x second derivative and the y, pure y second derivative, that had some interpretation there. This value was positive 2 this had a value of negative 2. Well, think back to our original one variable functions. When we talked about second derivatives of those, we were talking about the curvature of the function. And we talked about the second derivative being positive, meaning concave up, and negative, meaning concave down. Does that make sense in this context here? I think it does, because this is 
keeping y constant, what is the rate of change of the x slopes? This is the rate of change of the x slopes as x increases. Okay, that can be translated into curvature. We think of the slope here at the point we're considering is negative 4, and then a little further on it's less steep, and then it's less steep still, less steep still. So the x slopes are increasing in value. They start at minus 4, then they go to 0, then they go positive. So the x slopes are increasing. And if we have that configuration, notice that's as x increases as we take steps in the positive x direction. And what that tells us is that we have something that's concave up in the x direction. So I hope that makes sense. The idea of the second derivative here, all with respect to x, means that we're effectively leaving y out of the equation for a moment and asking what happens only in the x direction. Well then, what happens with this second partial derivative with respect to y? Well, same idea, except here we're keeping x constant and we're only varying y. What happens as we go in the y direction? Well, our y slope is negative 2, and then it gets steeper down and steeper downhill still. Or if you talk the other direction, it was 0 and then uh, negative 1, then negative 2. The y slopes are decreasing as y increases. And that corresponds to our second derivative, the rate of change of the y slopes being negative. Or the shape being concave down, shape of the surface being concave down in the y direction. So our second derivatives with respect to x and y, the pure unadulterated second derivatives, all with respect to x, all with respect to y, I think are fairly straightforward to interpret given our understanding of single variable uh, second derivatives. So that's great. Basically these two things mean concavities and the only thing you have to keep in mind is they're concavities in the cardinal directions. The x second derivative is the concavity in the x direction, and it can be a totally different concavity if we were to slice the function uh, in the y direction.